Entering into an unmapped underwater cave is one of the most dangerous tasks a human can ever face. It takes a special diver with technical expertise and experience to map these systems safely. In May of 1988, three incredible groups of divers entered the unmapped Little Dismal Sink in Florida with one objective, generate a layout of the cave for other divers. But during their exploration, nothing seemed to go right, from equipment failures to navigation issues and low air supply, which eventually led to a tragedy and an accident that would be studied and learned from for years. This is their story. The Little Dismal Sink, or the Hammock Sink, is located just south of Tallahassee, Florida, an area known throughout the country as one of the best places for one of the most dangerous yet peaceful sports in the world, cave diving. The irony of partnering danger and peace together is not lost on me, but it is entirely true in this sport. While cave diving is wildly known as a dangerous sport to those unfamiliar with it, for those that understand the risk and are trained properly, it is usually described as some of the most peaceful moments of their lives. Today, the Little Dismal Sink is part of the Apalachicola National Forest and the second largest sink in the area, losing that top spot to its brother the Big Dismal Sink. The entire cave system has a depth of just over 200 feet, and the entire length measures just over 900 feet. It is split up into six rooms, with each having their own features and landmarks. Each room is separated by different restrictions, with some areas being completely wide open, while others are very narrow. Now remember, in 1988, the deep part of the cave system had not been mapped, so the divers that entered the cave in May had no idea how far these tunnels could go or the ultimate risk they would be undertaking. If this sounds like it was for advanced and experienced divers, well, you'd be correct, and the men that entered the sink check that box. Each of them have a deep history with deep sea and cave diving, and the men mentioned in this story would be pioneers in the sport for generations. Some of their techniques and inventions are used to this day, but this is cave diving. Experience always matters, but sometimes things just go wrong. On May 15th, Bill Gavin, Bill McFadden, Bill Main, and others entered Little Dismal Cave with the objective to collect geological samples and survey data for the upstream and downstream tunnels of the deep section. The group had been diving the sink for a few weeks in preparation for this very dive, and they had established a dive line nearly to the deepest area of the cave. A dive line is a thin rope that stretches from the entrance of the sink to each area of the cave. The main purpose is safety, as without a dive line, it can be be very easy to become lost. Additionally, if a diver makes a small mistake by displacing dirt on the walls, roof, or floor, a cloud of silt can easily cover them, reducing visibility to nearly zero. In these situations, having an established dive line is crucial to keeping a diver calm and leading them to safety. To reach the deepest section of the cave, the divers would have to navigate through narrow restrictions where they would squeeze their bodies and equipment through sharp boulders, inching their way forward into the next rooms. One mistake or cave-in. Well, there was no coming back from that. After navigating through the peanut room or the first room, then the second room, the divers had a choice. They could navigate to the fourth room, through the third room, or through a narrow shortcut that skipped the third room. Finally, they would reach the fifth room where the upper passage of the cave ends. The upper passage of the cave at nearly 700 feet long with a depth of 150 feet was well understood at the time, but in the fifth room, there was a nearly vertical shaft leading to the sixth room at a depth of 170 feet. This would be known as the deep unmapped section of the cave. Before delving into the incident, it's crucial to understand the function of a dry suit. This waterproof suit provides a pocket of air inside offering thermal protection from cold water at depth. This is important as Florida caves are known for being cold. And if you have ever jumped into a cold body of water, well you would know that your body can literally freeze up while your mind fails to function properly. That is why a dry suit is a crucial piece of equipment to these divers. As the divers descend, the water pressure compresses the dry suit, necessitating the addition of air from cylinders. Controlling buoyancy is essential as expanding air during ascent could lead to life-threatening situations. 
Once the divers entered the sink, a few divers almost immediately began collecting samples within the first room, while others, such as Bill Gavin, made a beeline to the deep section of the cave. It was agreed before the dive that Bill Gavin would be exploring the downstream tunnel alone. As the most experienced diver, he didn't want anyone behind him, as the downstream siphon was a narrow tunnel. Bill Main and Bill McFadden would be exploring the upstream tunnel, as they had just a little bit more space, but it still presented many challenges with low ceilings and silty floors, making navigation difficult. Early into the dive after entering the tunnel, McFadden's equipment would become entangled with the guideline, slowing their progress, but they were eventually able to untangle him and continue. They also faced many challenges with visibility, as the tunnel was narrow and caused silt to fill the area around them. At times, they could hardly see a few feet in front of them, which only slowed down their progress. They continuously held on to the guideline that was laid, as it was their only lifeline back to the sixth room. Despite all of the challenges, the two men were able to successfully map a substantial area of the upstream tunnel, but it was on their return that things would begin to go wrong. Bill Main was leading the way, while McFadden followed, but Maine would often turn around to ensure that his partner was still behind him. Upon exiting the tunnel and reaching the sixth room, Maine would turn towards the entrance and wait for McFadden, who did not emerge as expected. It was merely seconds, but coincidentally, Bill Gavin was exiting the downstream tunnel while Maine was waiting for his partner. Gavin had successfully mapped the downstream tunnel, but upon seeing Maine, Gavin had a bad feeling as he described, and his instincts would lead him to swiftly enter the upstream tunnel. Gavin would find McFadden nearly a hundred feet within the tunnel, off the line, and not moving, as he was almost completely paralyzed by either fear or simply unsure of what to do. But after seeing Gavin, he would light up and begin to follow him out of the tunnel. As they emerged into the sixth room, McFadden would signal that he was out of gas. Keep in mind that McFadden had only been missing for one or two minutes, so Gavin was surprised to see that he was already out of gas. Low on air, the team was faced with a challenging situation. Gavin only had enough air for a single person to reach the decompression tank and with McFadden out of air, he knew that he would have to share, but there simply wasn't enough. With no other options, Gavin would give McFadden his long hose, and he would notice that McFadden was breathing like a horse, indicating that he was scared. At this point, Gavin would state, McFadden grabbed my manifold like a vise, and I hit the trigger. We go to a vertical pit, and I stopped monitoring and started venting my dry suit. Suddenly, I realized that even though I was venting as fast as I could, we were ascending rapidly. McFadden would not let go of my manifold to vent his suit, and next thing I knew, I was pinned like a bug to the ceiling. I couldn't get him to let go of my manifold, so I could even turn around. I finally had to use the scooter to pull us back down so we could continue out. During the entire exit, Bill Maine had had hold of McFadden's legs, trying to pull him down by getting as negatively buoyant as he could, but they would soon begin to run out of gas. Gavin would be seconds away from passing out when Bill Main started to buddy breathe with him on his short hose. Bill McFadden was already using Bill Main's long hose, so the trio was down to one tank of gas. At this point, Gavin was barely conscious. His head was a ball of screaming agony from carbon dioxide buildup, and Bill Main, in a desperate attempt to save McFadden, was contemplating cutting his suit to release excess air. However, realizing the potential risk and uncertainties, he opted to continue controlling McFadden's buoyancy, but it was already too late. After a minute, Bill Main would watch as his partner's eyes had glossed over, and after becoming unconscious, he would begin floating, succumbing to the effects of a rapid ascent. Bill Main, although fearing for his own life, couldn't help but think McFadden for the first time in minutes looked peaceful. He didn't have long to grieve, as after a minute, he would pick up Bill Gavin, who was still buddy breathing with himself, and make the decision to swim further back into the cave. Gavin was screaming that he did not want to go back into the cave, but after securing the second regulator into his mouth, he realized that Maine was taking him to clearer water. The last thing Gavin saw was McFadden upside down on the ceiling before he entered a different room. Once in clear water, the duo calmly would stabilize their situation. With Gavin on Maine's long hose, they were both able to recollect their thoughts and then locate the dive line. Minutes later, they would reach the decompression tanks and eventually exit the cave. Post-mortem analysis revealed that McFadden suffered an intra-alveolar borrow trauma, leading to gas bubbles forming during rapid ascent. 
ultimately causing his death. Bill Gavin would later state, I did everything I could for McFadden, and so did Bill Maine, and we both nearly got killed. Make absolutely no mistake, trying to rescue a panicked diver is one of the most dangerous things you can attempt.